Hello world, how are we all today? It's an interesting question to ask of a recorded show, now isn't it? How are we all today? Does that make you answer the question in your mind? Do you answer it out loud? Is it a way to form an interaction with the speaker of the recording? Does it help gain an audience? These are just some of the questions that pop up in my mind whenever I listen to a podcast or a video. And that is just the base, that is just based on a question. I'm actually reading some notes at the moment that I've written. And I'll try to present those notes as best as I can, but my typing is really terrible. So there's the first insight into my mind. Okay, let's start off slow and get into some background first. Before we venture off into into when, I hope to be fun. What? That does make sense. See, my writing just makes no sense. I think uh, what I'm trying to say here is before we venture into anything too deep, let me give you some background into who I am and what I'm all about and what this show is all about. So, my name is Michael, and today I'm starting a show about my life and my life philosophy. And I will try and delve really deeply into my own mind. Something that I do often inside my own head, but I figured, you know, let's give this a go. Let's see what happens. And I will try to present what goes on in my mind in a fun and hopefully understandable way, if you understand what I'm, I'm trying to say. Every mind that I've come across works differently, and trying to figure out that mind can be a plethora of complications that just baffle me sometimes. And it, it comes down to a question of whether we should really bother or not and try to figure out even our own minds but let's just continue so why am I doing this why am I doing this video this audio podcast this whatever you want to call it well and as all things the answer is not so straightforward and I am quite sure everybody would have their own opinion that being said it is the very reason why I'm doing this I wish to explore my own mind and invite everyone else to explore it with me. I want to know your opinions on my life and my mind and as a matter of reflection through you the listeners and your comments and your arguments I hope to gain an insight into the universe outside of my own mind. I tend to believe that the universe we create in our own minds can only be enhanced by the interaction of the world around us. Now, that could be just a bubble effect, you could say. We could all exist in our own bubbles of reality, and when we cross over into other people's bubbles, we take things from their reality and make it fit into ours, or we analyze theirs and make it fit into ours, or Basically, yeah, these are the type of questions that I'll be uh, exploring in my own head, and but verbalizing them in the show, obviously. So you can see, I'll I might make my notes public and um, post them up as well, so you'll see exactly what I've written down and what I've actually I'm just coming up dynamically as I'm going. So I'm just scanning through my list here now. Um. I tend to believe that the universe we create in our minds can only be enhanced by the interaction of the world around us. Now we will be getting into some deep philosophy, at least my philosophy. Questions throughout the series that I will have and pose to myself and the listeners and see if you guys answer them. If, if, you're, if you think that this is something fun to do, um, I'll ask a question. And it seems that that's the nature of 
YouTube and podcasting and such. You have an opinion, you put it out there. Other people who are interested will go and interact with you and discuss it with you. And that's what I'm hoping will happen happen with this show. Now, what kind of questions do I have in my mind and questions that I want to discuss with the world? Well, these questions are what is usually, what is, why, you know, what, where, when, how and why, those are the usual questions that we ask. These questions usually have arrived from the trivium and the contrivium and the seven liberal arts. If you don't know what those are, Google them. It's very interesting reading, very interesting stuff that you can learn there. Um, so who, what, where, when, how, why? Let's start off with the what. Like my what's tend to be what is life, what is love, truth, the meaning of life, what is existence, what is language, what is and or what are thoughts, what is the universe, what is pain, what is pleasure, what is humanity, do our senses create our experience, or is there other things that interact, that happen, that are that define our reality or is it just our senses um, what is reality what is perception and what is understanding very deep questions that have baffled philosophers and free thinkers and people all over the world for centuries since the beginning in the dawn of time Whatever that may be, whatever your philosophy or whatever your understanding of the beginning of life or our existence is, no matter if you're religious or you're whatever, it seems that a lot of things cross over actually from what I've seen. But again, that's for a different show. Right now, let's just try to get through the basics. I will try and make this show dynamic and living as I am and as all things technically are. You can script things as much as you can, as much as you want, but in the end things just happen because they happen. And we will try and understand why and how and so on and so forth. Um, by this I will be preparing questions and ideas and then arguing and discussing these questions out loud for everyone to hear, interpret and in turn join me and teach me. So basically, yeah, what happens in my own head, I'm gonna try and verbalize it. Now, be warned, I have no training in speech and quite frankly the educational system sucks when it comes to teaching people how to speak properly. It teaches them how to read, how to interpret science, how to interpret books, how to basically understand the words that are on pages, but the educational system does not teach you how to speak properly and get your ideas and your and what's in your head basically out in a logical and understandable format for others to be able to interpret and What's the word? See again, like my vocabulary sucks. Basically, to you know, they they will an easy way for you to present your idea for that so that the essence of your idea is understood by the person that is reading it or listening to it. It seems we have. A lot of trouble in doing so and this is where advertising and say that media and movies and things they're so they they're formatted in a way that we can understand them but when you look at it technically they're so dumbed down that it makes you question whether your mind at all has any sort of intelligence to it at all because for you to understand something, it has to be dumbed down in such a way. So you instantly arrive with the question, well, for me to understand that, it has to be stupid. Therefore, am I stupid? Or is just my lack of understanding or willingness to understand affecting my ability to be able to understand what that person is going on about? And therefore, 
I'm listening to something that's so stupid. And it has to be that stupid, because otherwise nobody would understand it. So I... Yeah, that's a question that I've been rattling around in my head lately. Um, what what kind of level of understanding of of knowledge do we have as a society right now? And I'm not talking about specialities and fields of knowledge that we have out there, science, as the sciences and the philosophies and the different theologies and the ideologies and things like that. There's the specifics that if people tend to get into and split off into and and argue and build upon. But as a society together, are we actually getting dumber or are we getting smarter? What's, what's going on really? Because when I look at everything as a whole, I kind of tend to imagine from this one of the Superman movies, you know, when Superman flies up above the earth and he's looking at the entire world and he opens up his ears and he can hear all the conversations and he can hear everything is going on all at once. And that's what I kind of try to do. I try to see everything all at once and then go, well, okay, this is what's happening right now. Why is this? Then you can fly off into your little bits and pieces here and there and argue this and argue that but then you have to zoom back out and go okay well did that actually help me understand the whole picture is it helping me understand the whole picture and I've kinda of lost my train of thought this happens quite often especially when I'm speaking I think mainly because as I'm speaking I'm trying to argue in my head what I'm trying what I'm saying and those arguments then overfill my brain and cause me to lose what the hell point I was trying to make in the first place. And that's a tragic thing to me, I think. Because I often try to explain to people what it is that's going on in my head or my view on something. And yet, I'm incapable of doing so. Now, I could go and learn manipulation which is what I think communication is. If anybody that studied NLP will know the very first rule that you basically learn is that communication is manipulation. And any time that you communicate, you're instantly manipulating the thoughts and the presence of that person that's actually listening to you or interacting with you. But I don't want to do that. I don't feel it necessary or don't find a reason or a want to want to manipulate somebody so I tend to just internalize I tend to just think in my own head and from what I've noticed it doesn't actually matter what you say to people it doesn't actually mean anything you could be the greatest teacher in the world it doesn't really matter that you're speaking it means nothing really or does it? I mean, how do we judge what is relevant for us to listen to and what isn't? How do we interpret the things that we listen to and, and have communicated to us? How do we process that and create the relevance or the links that create the reality around us? I don't know, but perhaps we'll leave that for another show. That's just, see, right there, there's a little bit of a, a hint of what goes on in my head. Um, okay, I will try and make every show around 30 minutes long, because I think that's about the extent of, I mean, our, our attention span is just flickering, or, or flickering away. We've got, like, second by second and it seems the younger generations are getting worse and worse unfortunately the attention spans is just incredibly ridiculous mainly and it's been argued and I do believe that it is the TV and the games and all this and that everything needs to be 
Yeah, well, that's just an argue argument. Let's just not go into that right now. But it, it's, a, it's a pattern that I think everybody would agree with. It, it, the attention spans are getting lower and lower. I think let's just forget about the argument for now and let's just accept that as reality, as what, at least my observable reality, that's what seems to be happening. So I reckon about 30 minutes should be sufficient enough to, for me to get my ideas out there and my thoughts and then leave enough room for people to be able to interpret and to listen to and have a rattle around in their head. Okay, I'll try and make it entertaining, as I've said. Um, from the past few videos that I've made, um, I've noticed that the more random my videos, the better they seem to be. Um, and again, I think that goes into the whole um, attention span uh, person. But is attention span so low because we are getting quicker at understanding things? Or is our attention span so low because we are getting dumber? That's, that's an interesting question right there. I mean, is are people getting so quick at understanding things that they no longer need to sit there and ponder over a book for hours at an end that they've just read? Or they could hear something so, you know, and understand its context a lot quicker than what we used to be able to do? Or is it because their links in their head are getting created in a, such a quick way that they no longer need to sit there and ponder again, but they have the full capability of understanding? Or is it that they don't understand and so they switch off and their mind just goes, okay, I don't understand that, let's just get rid of it, go into something else that I do understand. And then, which is sort of evident by some of these shows that you watch, for instance, like Family Guy and um, American Dad and like Ren and Stimpy when they first came out. I mean, you, you look at their shows and it's like, how idiotic. But at the same time, they were entertaining and fun for certain generations. I always just thought they were stupid. I couldn't, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get the people that used to like those shows either. I mean, sometimes they were funny. But they were funny because they were stupid. And I was laughing at it, the stupidity of it, not the fact that it was funny. So that sort of shows me that the generations that do like those shows are dumbed down. But at the same time, when you look at some of these shows, like um, Family Guy, for instance, there's a lot of interesting philosophy, I guess, or world views that get crop, that crop in there, that Seth seems to have put in there, that make you think. But is it... Is the show a form of manipulation, or is the show more... trying to teach you. That's what I've noticed about a lot of shows is on one hand they're dumbing you down, on the other hand they're trying to teach you what it is you've forgotten. And it's sort of like this repetitiveness that we need to go through to be able to get certain things. And But is that necessary? See back in the day, from what I've read at least, people would just understand and remember. I mean, memories are a lot, were a lot better back then than they are now. And that's argued, obviously, of course. You know, we've got access to information at the tip of our fingers nowadays. Our phones, our, our media, our computers, everything. Just any question you have, you can just punch it up, look it up, there it is. You no longer have to remember everything, so that gives us room for other things. But are are we filling our heads with things that we should be filling our heads with, or are we, or is the media and 
and the books that we read and things are is just a whole bunch of fluff. Is it things that are unnecessary? Is is it actually helping us improve our society and improve our humanity or is it going the other way? Are we like idiocracy, the movie idiocracy? Are we just getting dumber and dumber to the point where everything has to be explained to us, even how a button function before we can even press the button? Um, or the function of the button before we can even press the button. So, yeah. So, th there's another example <laughs> of what goes through my head. I basically ran out of notes here. So, I'm just going off the top of my head of things that I want to talk about. So, we're at 20 minutes, or roughly 20 minutes right now. And what else? I don't really want to get into anything too deeply on the first show, um, mainly because I just want to see the effect or the uh, response that I get from this show, from this 30 minutes, from mainly from my friends um, who watch this, see what they think, if they have any input on it, or if they're just going to go, oh great, Michael's ranting again. Um, I don't know actually, so well, it's an it's an interesting thought experiment or reality experiment you could say. Um, but I'm really keen into getting to, into these questions and seeing what everybody else thinks, what everybody's views on this are, or their lack thereof views, I don't know. Um, I don't know what else to, because it's just audio at the moment, and it will just be me talking. Now I might make snippets of videos, or maybe discuss some things I've seen, but I don't quite know. What do you guys think? What, what, where should I, what should I do on the screen, as in on the screen, what should I do on the screen while I'm talking? Because uh, I feel like maybe playing a game or something might be too distracting for me to talk and think at the same time. Um, I could pop up, maybe make pictures that are relevant to the thoughts that I'm having. Um, or I may just, for this first episode, just put up some a whole bunch of random, just relaxing, interesting photos that I find interesting and thought-provoking. Um, and then I'll see how that goes, and we'll I'll think about it further and see what what else I can do. Um, I don't want to. I'm tempted to explore what other people have done, but at the same time, I know if I do that, I'll just get influenced by it and copy it, and I don't want to do that. Um, I want to just come up with something dynamically and naturally and myself, um, based on what I know right now. Um, rather than have other people and uh, their way of doing things influence the way I want to do things. So I'll try and avoid that, but it may become necessary. I don't know. Okay, so what else is there? Now, going through my hand notes here as well. And uh, I've basically covered everything that I've had in my notes. So that's an interesting thing. It's going to be interesting to try and fill 30 minutes hmm okay so we've already had a bit of a discussion about certain questions that I've already had so what do you guys think okay so let's go back to those questions that I had in that little rant that I had before and uh, write down a comment um, and your views. Even make a video response if you like. I'd, I love to watch videos on YouTube. A very thing. Especially people's... I hardly comment, which is pretty bad because I'm sure that's what those people are looking for. Um, uh, but I just kind of, like I said, I internalize everything. Therefore, I just don't interact with this world around me as much as certain people think that I should. Especially my family. Family really thinks that I should interact with the world a bit more rather than just have everything in my head. But is there a difference? Let's make that the last question, okay? Let's ignore everything else for now. Let's make this the question. Should, is there a difference between 
how we interact with the outside world, and that is externally outside of our own body and our own mind, or and the world that we have inside of our head, because everybody has their own little world in their head. That's you can't argue with that. Everybody has it. It's just the con construct of it inside of our head that's different. It's fascinating to learn about those constructs and such. Um, so, is there a difference? And how would you tell the difference of what is in your head and what is outside of your head? Mainly, most people... Okay, let's just ask that question. I want input on it right now. Let's just see what other people say. So, that's the question. How do you tell the difference between the world inside of your head and the world that is outside? How do you tell? Okay, let me know. Just post down below your answer. Or a video response or whatever way you want, or just ignore it, whatever you want to do. But please, that would be something interesting for me to ponder what everybody else's views on that question is. How do we tell the difference between the world outside of our minds and the world inside of our minds? How do we tell that difference? Okay, well, 26 minutes or so. I think that's enough. Thank you for anybody that has listened to this. It's uh, great to have your attention and your uh, your input. It would be greatly appreciated. I'll try and make it more interesting and um, for next time. Not that this isn't interesting. To me, this is interesting. I just like listening to people talk. So to me, this is very interesting. This type of thing. Um, I hate it when people try to influence me, but. I like to listen to other people's opinions and thoughts on things that I say or even things that other people say. So let me know. Let me know the answer to that question. How do we tell the difference between the world that it's, exists in our heads and the world that exists outside? Thank you for listening and have a great day.